Good times, people. For you just released a new balance patch. So we're going to go over there. All right, here we are. There's the balance patch. And we have a bunch of fruits being nerfed, mostly. But some got buffed. All right, let's go over them. So we first got Tori. Phoenix Pirate Apple now cancel if the user's in mode. So I'm guessing that when you're in bird form or in half form and you start healing, you're going to get your thing canceled. This means nothing as it is only in combat and when you're fighting NPCs, you're not going to be in combat. And second, you're, it's a PP thing. It's a PP thing, so nobody cares. Phoenix Pirate Apple cooldown is now 15 seconds. I'm assuming that's a nerf because it's... Why would it be a buff? If it's a buff, I'm, I honestly question for you ability to balance. But it was most likely a nerf. So sadly, your little heal that's going to heal you to full is no longer going to be as good. Full form model hitbox increase. This means that when trying to want a full form Tori, it should be a lot easier to hit them. This means nothing in PvE. Because as long as, as far as I know, NPCs don't have Gepo, so they can't hit you while you're flying. Tori burn no longer heals. That sucks, but... Yeah, you already have a good heal, so, you know, spoiled brat. Bari, barrier spikes damage scaling increased. Yay, yay. I mean, in PvP, it's like good, I guess, but in PvE, uh, well, I guess when you're dealing with smaller enemies, you're going to be having a better time, but, yeah, the fruit is still the same. All right, Mara, old burn ticks have. Whoa, that's crazy, yeah. Well, anyways, Mara's biggest change this update is going to be later on. Yeah, it's not even the fruit that got changed. It was something else that got changed completely and made the fruit better indirectly. All right, next we have open. Thorn stun reduced. Now, at first you might think, oh, no, no, but it actually means nothing because it's stun. And, you know, stun in PvE means nothing. This is because in PvP you could use thorns and then into rocks and destroy their health. So, I'm guessing for you finally caught on to that. Uh, that nothing changes. Mochi, burning mochi punch, hitbox width and height increased. That's massive for PvE. So, means nothing in PvE. Mochi is still pretty bad. Pa oh my god, Pa Barrage does more damage. Holy crap, it does more damage. Yeah! But Barrage Duration last order. Uh, worthless change. Why even do it then? In, in fact, this is a nerf. This is a nerf because if you're doing your Barrage and it lasts shorter, that means, let's say, your friends are fighting with you, with the boss. That means you your stun is reduced, so the boss is going to be stuck in stun for less time. Blast Cluster now has an indicator for when it's fully charged. You know how big this change is? It's so big, the earth just got heavier. In the golden age of GPO, where trading was actually fair and fruit values were big, we had the ability to use the sound cue of the move to tell when the move was fully charged. So it'll start humming like, and then it would go quiet. After it went quiet, you'd understand and know that your move is now fully charged. That uh, was no longer the case three updates later when for you buffed the charging rate of Blast Clusher, which means that the sound cue was after the the move was fully charged. So now in the indicator, we know when it's fully charged and it's no longer as if nothing happened because people were still using the sound cue to just tell when the f move was fully charged. All right. Mero, love bomb sped up by 30% means nothing in PvE because this move you were already landing it in PvE. Um, PP though, I don't know if that's good. Love wave knockback lower, that means you're gonna hit the, the entire love wave, which is really good, I guess. And people are not gonna escape it as often as you'd think. Soon at the search spot of vertical range increased slightly, it means absolutely nothing for both PP and PV. I don't know what, what this does, honestly, because the vertical range was already pretty good. Goro, paralyzation stun increase, means nothing. PP, paralyzation damage gain increase, alright, that's pretty good. Paralyzation bigger initial hitbox. That's pretty good. That means you'll be able to hit multiple en enemies. And with Goro's lightning chain thing ability, you see Goro has a passive. The lightning from Goro can arc through multiple enemies and deal a lot of damage, which is good for dungeons. But I don't, I haven't seen it be used effectively in main game. Buffing paralyzation and whatever is actually really good. It's mostly a PP change. Yami yeah, black hole startup increased slightly means nothing. Waste of time too because in PP the startup feels like nothing changed. Abyssal form faster out of combat means nothing. Waste of time. 
Sushi, sushi dominance startup increase, side a waste of time. Sushi punch range increase. I mean, not punch, uh, push. Uh, I, I guess that, you know, that's good. You can get over an enemy and push them from further now. But uh, other than that, pretty worthless changes. Well, that's it for fruits, and now we're going to weapons. You know why? Because I said earlier that Mera's biggest change wasn't the fruit itself, but it was actually its weapon. Visrael's pipe now scales on strength. You know, that means that your builds with Visrael pipe and claw got 400 billion billion thousand quadrillion times better. You see, the fact that Visrael's pipe scaled with weapon mastery before may meant that you had to separate points into strength and weapon mastery to make both work. But now that our, they both scale with the same thing, you essentially can dump everything into strength and you now have one of the best builds in the game because it's buffed by Mera. On top of also having the best boat in the game. Isn't that awesome? This is the reason why Mera will never get reworked because it doesn't need one. It has a weapon, it has a fighting style, and it has a boat. What else do you want? You want more moves on Mera? Jesus Christ. You. You. You're spoiled, and you want more. Well, that's about it for the, the balance patch. So we're now going to be going back to the tier list. Yay! Now, let's see what changed after that balance patch. Nothing changed. Yeah. Nothing changed. Everything stayed the same. But I am going to make some changes that were overdue from previous tier lists. First things first, I'm going to lower Moji. I think Moji isn't that good for PvE anymore, but it is still pretty decent and I still think it's better than Pika because Mochi has Chestnut and Pika has Laser. Mochi has Bus Cut, Pika has the, the thing that it's only good for bosses that stay still. And Bus Cut is really good when you're farming with your friends, so it's a pretty good support fruit. And then you have Light Kick, which does 100 damage, and that's it. And then we have Barrage, which does the same thing Light Kick does, but it hits multiple times and does more damage. Then we have Drops, and Mirror Kick is just not that good. And Drops is just going to do a lot of damage. You know, it's just better. Now, finally, I accept that Tori is better than Mochi. Very slightly, though. Very, very slightly. It's only because of the DPS, you know, and Burn and whatever. But outside of that, this... I, I wouldn't actually eat Tori over Mochi, but, you know, using information and data, Tori is mathematically better than Mochi. But fun-wise, I'd say Mochi is just more fun, and I'd eat Mochi over Tori any day. But Tyranodon is just a better Tori, essentially, without the heal, so it stays there. Next change I'm going to do is Ope. Gonna put Ope above the little, this little group of legendaries here. You see, Opa, I underestimated its ability to do damage to bosses and do damage in general. You know, I had this weird perspective in my mind that Opa was like, you know, it didn't have any AoE. But after fighting Opa multiple times in PvP, I think it definitely has AoE. Uh, especially the rocks. The rocks is the most important move. Of this fruit, and probably without that move, this uh, fruit would be in like D tier. <laughs> so, rocks by itself is carrying this fruit. You see, rocks, the AoE of the rocks is actually very, very misleading. It's actually bigger than the rocks itself. So, it's really good. You can do this from uh, basically anywhere, so that makes it really good and better than Yami's. Uh, what, what was it called? I don't remember. Oh, Liberation. Yeah, Dark Liberation or whatever. Essentially just a better version of that and better in every way. Because you can do it while you're getting stunned. If an NPC is hitting you, you can do it so you can escape. It has so many uses. And they fly in the air. They also ruin your PC's performance if you like that, yeah. So I don't recommend you eating this if you have a, a low-range PC. So, yeah, be careful with that. Or Unless your PC wants to you know start a fire but this fruit deserves to be in this spot it's really good uh the gamma knife you know person damage does all your health and pvp but you know, we don't talk about that 
what was the other move? It was, I think, Mess, which is the yellow move that's a grab. You know, that move, it feels like it got shadow buffed. <laughs> the range uh, feels a, l a little bit longer. I don't know why, but in PvP earlier, I was fighting my friend, and he was hitting the move from way too far for me to be comfortable. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. That's about it. If they buff Goro and and he or they nerf them or whatever, I'd actually remove Aether because as you can see it's a waste of a, a waste of space. But these fruits aren't S tier and they aren't B tier, so I have to leave them on A tier. Once again, Venom is still king, and I hope you enjoyed this tier list. See ya. Oh god, oh whoa 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 Ah it finally paid off It paid off It paid off It finally Ah no more grinding It's over